Hi people, welcome back to the tutorial on how to hack Metasploitable 2. I hope you're finding the tutorial is enjoyable. There's another brilliant tutorial coming your way now. Today we're going to look at ports 111 and 2049. RPC Bind and NFS respectively appear to be the services running on them. A quick heads up. NFS stands for Network File System and essentially is a distributed file system protocol allowing a user on a client computer to access files over a network. NFS is an open standard defining RFC's request for comments. Like other protocols, NFS builds on the open network computing remote procedure call system. The remote procedure call service is controlled by the RPC bind service. This utility maps RPC services to the port on which they listen. The process then notifies the RPC bind when they start, registering the ports they're listening on, and the RPC program numbers they're expected to serve. The client then contacts the RPC bind on the server with a particular RPC bind program number. Crucially, RPC bind must be available before any of the services starts. Throughout this tutorial, the Metasploit framework has been a tool of choice to deal with vulnerabilities on here. But for this one, we'll be taking a different approach. And keep in mind that our goal is to take advantage of a misconfigured NFS share. As you can see, an earlier scan of our host using Nmap confirms that RPC bind NFS services are indeed running on ports 111 and 2049, respectively. But to get a full picture of RPC services, a better command is the RPC info. So if we open a new tab here and type in RPC info. That command makes an RPC call to the Metasploitable RPC server and reports the status of the server. So if we run it, and it shows us all the RPC services that are running NFS, um, notably mounted, and status, port mapper, and log manager. And we can filter out, uh, for example, NFS as a target service using uh, the grep command. And there you are, so it just shows anything NFS related running on port 2049. Now, let's check the mount daemon on Metasploitable 2 about the state of the NFS server. And for this, we'll use the following command to show mount. Oh my dice. It looks like we can mount to the root file system, meaning we will have the keys to the kingdom. From here on, getting access to a system with a writable file system like this is not too difficult. And in this case, it's made easier because SSH is running. A strategy would therefore follow those three stages. So I will be creating an SSH key on my attacking machine, iKali, mount the NFS export, and add my key to the root user's account authorized key file, I override the key. So um, let's generate that SSH public and private key pair. In security terms, key pair are actually better than passwords. So, um, Let's make a directory here. Oh, sorry, it requires administrative uh, privileges. So, right, so maybe we might need to give ourselves administrative privileges here to proceed. And now let's cd into that. And to the new directory that we created. That's good. So this is going to be the location for the key. Now we're going to generate the RSA, uh, the RSA key pair by using the following command. Um, I've added those flags there, but it's not quite necessary. Um, the, the dash T specify the type of the key and the dash B and specify the number of bits in the key. It's, you don't have to do that really. So, okay, it's generated the key for us and uh, it's going to ask us to to name a file so let's give you um, a very basic name here kali underscore met to underscore rsi we don't need a passphrase we it's a tutorial it's not really live okay so um it, it has created it so we can just check it by typing ls dash here um there you go. So you can actually see that uh, the file name as well as the public key has been created. So now let's mount the Metasploitable to vulnerable machine root file system. So for that, we'll have to cd back to roots. Okay. And from here, 
we just got to type the follow command and the mount command really so um um you can actually see the no lock flag the no lock flag just disable the file locking and um, that's uh, the dash d is the is the type and uh, this is the device and that's the directory on which it's going to be mounted so to check whether that's work we can actually use the this free command there you go it's represented at the very bottom so we have successfully mounted up um, a exploitable tool good file system to Kali mount a directory so now we're, just, we're in a good place so we, we, we can now modify the exploitable to authorize key files so to do that we have to see the back to the mounted directory so that would be this one there and then and then we have to copy our public key into it Good. So um, we can actually double check. Um, well, that's it, guys. We can actually see that our public key is being copied into the into the Mante directory. And what we're going to do next is just to append our public key to the authorized key here. In in, in meaning now we have to auth um, override and uh, the authorized key with our with our public key. So we're going to use the cat command to do that. Brilliant. So um, that's done. So you could actually try and find out um, the authorized key. There you go. So you can actually see a Kali, um, a, a Kali public key um, added to the appended to the and to the to the metasploitable authorized key. So you have to remember also that that the key we created is without a passphrase. So the key in the victim machine will also be without a passphrase. Therefore, when it's connecting using SSH, it won't be prompted for a password. So now let's connect using uh, SSH. But we need to make sure that we're back into the right directory. Okay, and then we're gonna use the following SSH command. Right, I mean, just to explain this uh, this command quickly, I mean the dash i it's it's a file from the from which the private key uh, for the public key authentication is read. That's just how RSA encryption work. It, it used to to set a key, a public and private key. And if we just accept that, okay, and um, we have to type yes because this is the first time um, we 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 we're, we're using this connection. Boom! There you have it. We're in, and not only that, we have root privileges. You can try the staple commands to prove it. For example, who am I? It tells you that we root your name. Dash all. There you go. And uh, you, if you'd also like to extract the root user's encrypted passwords, then you can use the following command. As you know, the password resides in a shadow file. There you go. So you've got um, the root users encrypted passwords. Um, I know that we have covered very new and tricky concepts. If you have any questions, then please stick them in the comments. And this brings the tutorial to an end. I hope that you have enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.